What's in the box? We have a package here from another YouTuber, Pole Bender. If you guys don't know Pole Bender, go check out her channel. She is, uh, she loves Mondo Catfish. She hails from Texas. She's now living in Arkansas. Very cool. Great channel. I um, think she's got around 23,000 subscribers. Really, really good stuff. Um, go check her out, Pole Bender. But um, I talked to her on Messenger and she knows that I custom paint baits. So she said she was going to send one or two. I'm not sure how many. I think it's a jerk bait. I think. Um, but again, I'm not 100% sure. And I'm excited to see what's in the box. So let's just. Take a look. And yes, I, uh, I definitely, oh, wow. What? What is this? <laughs> okay, whoa, this is, wait, this is very cool. Okay, so this is a deep diving jerk bait. It's a reclaim. Um, hey, Jen, this is the lure I found. If it doesn't work out, it's cool. Feel free to give it a test on tight lines, Dallas awesome pole bender and what is this craziness that's too cool pole bender thank you so much that's like the mystery unboxing that i had no idea was coming um i'm totally hooking you up on this girl even if that one doesn't work out we're gonna hook you up with some cool baits for this love a good trade and this is wow this just made me smile so um cool we're gonna do a spray session on the uh on the jerk bait and then I'm gonna I'm gonna kick her some some cool stuff in return for these awesome pole bender hats, and I will wear them with pride, my friend. I will wear them with pride. Oh wow, look at the look at the back of this, you guys. This is quality, man. This is a cool hat. That is definitely a big old monster cat. You can see the mouth and the eye and the tail and the back and the fins. This is awesome, Dallas. Thank you so much, pole bender. Go check her channel out. She's totally worth it. And heads up, shout out to all the lady anglers out there. I want to hear about you. I guess I want to know about your channel. I want to see what you're doing. I know Grab Life by the Fish has got a rocking channel as well. Love to see the lady anglers out there doing what they do. So here's to the ladies. Happy New Year. Great unboxing. This is the first unofficial segment where I'm going to be doing any kind of spraying on video, but there's a purpose for it. You guys saw me unbox this in the beginning of this video, and this is this is kind of a cool project. So it's a collaborative effort between myself and Paul Bender. Um, Paul Bender, who you guys probably know a lot better than many of you may know me. Um, we have gotten together over the past year or so just over messaging and, and different types of social media. And she's best known for just mondo catfish catches and cool stuff down in Texas. Well, her family has moved up to Arkansas, which is super, super cool. She's now in the Ozarks. Um, so she sent me this and those really cool hats. Thank you, Paul Bender. And I'm doing something with this now. For those of you that, that like to check out my aspect of custom painting, I normally start from scratch. But what you can see on this is that I've already got some shading in. Uh, I'm basically using gold. And I'll just pull these bottles out to show you guys. Gold, burnt umber, a deep red, which we're getting ready to use in some of the more detailed shading. And just on the, just kind of blended in some transparent bright red to the bill edge. This was a, a reclaim that she found, and I think it's still pretty sound body. I don't see any splits in it. I dunked it underwater uh, before I started spraying it, and there's no leaks, there's no air bubbles that come up through it. So it's a trolling lure. I would imagine that this lure was probably most used for walleye. Um, or possibly some uh, 
some deeper bass because this is a, a longer bill minnow. So it's going to be probably, I'm guessing that this was used for walleye. I could be wrong, but that's what I would probably use it for. So I've done some initial shading on this. Um, we've got a, a lighter color in the eye sockets and then just a dab of black on the pupil. Probably going to keep it that way. If I did anything else with it, I would probably draw more attention to the eye with some fluorescent pink. We're going to see how this turns out first before I even think about what I'm going to do with the eye. I might, again, leave it like it is. First thing that we're going to do, though, this is another R-Tool stencil. And you can see that there's a lot of really tiny, minute cutout areas. We're just going to lay this over. And I've done this in a few other videos, not in quite some time, though, uh, and just get some detailing done. I'm probably going to turn this into a craw for. So here we go. So I took a second and uh, rejuvenated my glass of water here. And I, I went to the market today and I got some of the, probably some of the freshest lemons and limes I've seen since last year. Um, they really look good. And I'm going to be making a couple of different well, seafoods uh, tonight, I'm doing crab cakes tonight. And then I'm going to have some steelhead tomorrow. So I wanted to make sure I had fresh lemon and lime in the house. And you can see how that looks. And we're, it really doesn't have to be a huge method to the madness here, just a couple of random spots. And then down the back as well, we'll get some pretty cool striping effects, little dots. And of course, this is gonna be covered with a craw pattern on top of that. But we definitely want to just do a couple of random spots on the sides. And that's probably good maybe on the underside of this bill. I don't know if that's the best way to do it really isn't a great way to do the undersides of these bills. Let me flip it around this way while it's on the helping hands. And I want to kind of do it all at once while I have this stencil out. You can see I've, this has been pretty well used before. I don't always do this type of shading or stenciling. But when I do, It gives me some really fun results, and that that should be okay. You, know, you don't want to overdo it. You really want to just kind of accent what's already there. The other thing that we are going to do on this is spray really, really light. And uh, I think I might even use either this or some sepia to do that, um, to do the crawl outline, the shell outlines on this. We're going to be using from our larger piece of stencil because the, you got to remember the minnow is a lot thinner bodied. So putting, trying to put a Mondo cross segment on this with a larger stencil just doesn't make sense for this lure. So we're going to stick to the basics here. We're going to put this collar on. Provided we can get, there we go, got a little flow going. And we got that, and we'll put the other little pieces from here. And for this, we're going to do some thin segments at the back and then a larger segment. And as we go, we'll just kind of widen out the segments here. So you start fairly thin at the back, and then as you get towards the head of this, or actually the tail, depending on how you look at this, we're going to be swimming it this way, obviously. The bill is going to be digging into the ground, um, but we're going from small segments to large segments. You could, you could reverse that if you want to do a true crawl pattern. If you were going to put the eyes back here, kind of move that around towards the front. But for this, we're going to leave it as it is. 
just kind of get it simple but try and make it look good nonetheless. So we're just going to use this little segment piece here. Make sure I'm recording and I am. And then real light. Hit that and then move to the back and get that down. As you widen that out, you can kind of move this little segment around. Fold that down, get a better. And then do this last piece like this. All right, maybe just come back and. Okay, so that's basically. What you're starting out with, and I'm spraying on about, oh, what are we set at over here? About 10 psi on this. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. We're just going to flip this over. We're going to blot this off, move my water here for a second. All right, come in on this tail piece right there. And then this, and then just keep widening that out, widening, see if I can speak in complete sentences today, hopefully I can. And as we go around, we need to make sure we're focused on the entire side of this minnow here. I love this song. I don't know if you guys can hear what I'm listening to today. It's World Cafe. Of course, it's XPN. And Johnny Marr is in the studio with them. And if you don't know anything about Johnny Marr, go check out the Smiths. And his signature song from them was How Soon Is Now. He's their guitar player. There we go. And one more here phenomenal musician, Modest Mouse. You guys, the younger group of us, group of y'all, might know him from Modest Mouse. I'm go about things the wrong way. And I'm looking for a little piece of, yeah, that'll work. Just need something to kind of imitate on the edges, a little bit of a craw arm. That doesn't have to be serious. I'm gonna flip it around to the other side, do the same thing. There we go. Nothing in particular. So, the only thing left to do here is we're going to do just a little bit, not a whole lot, but just a little bit of accenting on the segments in black, just to kind of finish this bait off. Real light. And do a little bit on the back here. I'm just going to lay this down and remember when you guys are stenciling, you want to grab the outlines. Grab the outlines of the edges that you're working on. And just a couple little random pieces on the other side. All right, 
just about there, folks. And then, I haven't figured out, I don't think either one of us have figured out, because Polebender is building a house right now um, on the side of a mountain. I haven't figured out if we're going to actually fish together or if I'm just going to send this back to her and she's going to take over the video from that part of the deal. A little extra accent on here. Okay. This is what we got, folks. Now we need to put on the bottom here. You, just, you don't want to scratch your paint. That's the one thing you got to be real careful if you're doing a bill like a wiggle ward is the same. You definitely don't want to scratch that paint on the bill because it's hard to match once you've finished that piece. So now we're just going to do some little stenciling. And there we go. We have got this back end here. It looks like I might have left just a little bit of the red in that, so that, that kind of looks go good. It's more natural. And maybe just to accent a couple of spots here. Get this in like this. Good deal, good deal. And this might make it a little bit easier to lay down some detail. Okay, just give this one final little heat set on what we've laid down so far. All right, yeah, I like it. I like the way it's come out. Maybe trick it out with just a little bit of ink outline. This is a smooth bait. There's no texturing to it. Doesn't look like one of these does. It's got the uh, the textured mold imprints on it. So we could probably just give it just a little bit of outline. Or perhaps not. I don't know. All right, I've got my little piece of <laughs> what's left of this paintbrush. I uh, was trying to dig into some like crystallized paint in one of the liquid acrylic jars and uh, snapped it, but it's, you know, it's not an expensive, thank goodness it's not an expensive round brush. This is the double zero that I use, and I'm just going to dot a couple of spots on here on each of these as we kind of go up, just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. I'm going to do that on each of these cross segments. Don't want to overdo it. Don't want to make it so busy that it doesn't even look realistic, but just a little bit to accent the edges of these segments is never a bad idea, at least in my opinion. You guys might have a whole different way of doing this. Just a couple more on this side. And as I'm thinking about this pattern, I am thinking about being able to use this for multi-species because these little minnows, while they will certainly knock the snot out of smallmouth and largemouth, I know that where she's going to be fishing this, there are some really big, big, big walleye. And I've caught some pretty, not on bull shoals, but I've caught some really good walleye over on Norfolk. Um, there's a couple of bluff walls and 
little ledge areas that they just they just kind of hang. One is actually real close to Henderson Marina and the Panther Bay area, which is shore accessible. In case any of you guys are wondering, if you guys don't have boats and you're beating feet along the banks, most of the places that I like to go, at least where I broadcast or where I shoot videos, they are um, public access points and uh, just about anybody can get there at least within a short distance and then there's other spots that I like that's um, wheelchair and assisted um, accessible which is also nice so I try and feature as many of those spots as I can too and I think you're gonna get I'm hoping you'll get a decent video out of this I'm really hoping you got it you know it's a lot of times it's skill a lot of times it's luck I know she's skillful with fishing so I'm not worried about that but a lot of the times it's it's really up to the fish and when she's able to take this and uh, have some fun with it and then we'll just do our you notice a lot of times on my baits I just do a couple of white random spots along the back just to accent a couple here and you can always put your finger on this as a point just so it makes your hand a little bit steadier when you're doing detailing if you're not sitting at a desk and you don't have a helping hands which I do I could probably do this I just ah see now there I goobered it up but that's okay the fish won't mind that one we'll just maybe I'll paint a little bullseye <laughs> can't believe I did that you know what let's talk about real quick how to take that off if it's still wet let's take the excess off with a little q-tip like it never happened tricks of the trade the key is don't heat set that stuff if you make a mistake acknowledge that you've made it and try and uh, get a little bit of moisture on a q-tip and take that right off there we go that's better okay um, do I want to add I, I poured out some fluorescent orange here actually this is fluorescent sunburst it's a little bit lighter just a couple of spots here couple little dots all right I think we're good folks we're gonna drop this into some clear coat and we're gonna give it over to pole bender because now it's up to you and the fish <laughs> 